How's it going everybody? In this video, what we're going to be doing is going through our Wind VMware Workstation networking deployment. We have a total of five VM nets that we're going to have to roll out, get operational, and basically understand that we're, what we're going to be trying to accomplish. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and explain to you how the VM nets work inside of VMware Workstation, why they're important, why we're going to need them, and then go through and show you guys how to deploy them. All right, so I've gone ahead and pulled up VMware Workstation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here on Edit and come down here to Virtual Network Editor. On Virtual Network Editor, here we have our virtual networks. We have VMNet0, which is a set to the type of bridged. The external connection, it says auto bridging. Host connection, there's really nothing going on here. VMNet1 is host only, meaning that when you set something as host only, that any virtual machines that are associated to this particular VMNet will only be able to talk to each other with inside of this ESXi host, or in this, in this case here, VMware Workstation. VMNet 8 means that you're going to NAT from whatever IP address is given here over to whatever the IP address is of the Windows Server 2012 R2. So in this case here, it is 10.255.1.81 is the IP address that's been given to this particular server that I'm RDP'd into. So we're actually going to go ahead and get rid of VMNet 8. We don't need him anymore. We're going to go ahead and remove the network. What this auto bridging means is we're going to go ahead and allow any connections that are coming in from the outside or need to come from VMware Workstation and go out to the outside world. They are basically going to be passively allowed through, through VMware Workstation to the outside world. So basically think like, look at it like we are basically taking the NIC of the server and we are bringing it into VMware Workstation and allowing any of the VMs that are have a VM NIC attached to VMNet0 to communicate with the outside world. It will allow us to configure the ESXi hosts with an IP address inside of that subnet and all the good stuff that goes along with that. So you have a couple of different options of which particular NIC you want to use. These are the actual physical NICs of the server. I'm going to leave it to automatic because it really doesn't make much of a difference what we're going to use. And it went ahead and uh, I flew, uh, it meant to say automatic here. We're going to go ahead and so if you, okay, I'm accidentally clicking there. So I'm going to go click on this guy here, host only. And when you click on host only, this is going to allow communication with any VMs are going to be able to communicate with each other inside of VMware Workstation, but not the outside world. So when we go to do deploy the data network, one of the things we're going to have to do is make sure that we connect a router or a firewall to this connect to connect to the data network so we can allow external access. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this process real quick of getting all getting all this stuff set up and squared away. Let me go ahead and take care. Let me show you some more details here. Remember that we're going to be using this subnet range right here for all the connectivity that we're going to be doing. So the management network is going to have 10.255.1. So that means that this PC will have an IP address of 10.255.1.21. Which if we want to make sure that that IP address is not being used, we're going to go ahead and ping 10.255.1.21 and make sure that that doesn't respond. It should not respond. None of the IP addresses I've given or assigned to these devices should respond, and they are not. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over here to the PC. And I'm going to go ahead and this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and give this guy the IP address of 10.1.vmnet1 will be 2. Because that will be the storage area network that we're going to deploy. And click on that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and add a network. VMNet2 is going to be what we add. 
it's automatically going to turn DHCP on, but we're going to go ahead and just turn the DHCP service off on this particular subnet. And then in this one here, this will be 10.1.3.0. Then we're going to add a network, VMNet3. Go ahead and turn DHCP off. And we'll then we'll do 10.1.4.0. Add another network, VMNet4. And then turn DHCP off, and then 10.1.5.0. There we go. All right, so now I've got my subnet, so I have 10.1.2.0, which will be for our storage area network, 10.1.3.0, which will be for data, 10.1.4.0, which will be for vMotion, and 10.1.5, which will be for fault tolerance. The, the cool thing about this is, is anything that needs to be turned on so any s particular services or features that need to be turned on at the VM kernel level, which we'll talk about later on, those can be, if we don't want to have our own dedicated subnet for that, we can go ahead or switch. We can connect it to any of the other subnets that we need to or any of the other VM nets. For our VM net 2 for our data network, I am going to turn DHCP on. In the DHCP settings, the start IP will be 10. Dot, um, in this case here will be go ahead and adjust this be 10.1.3 128 and then 10.1.3.254 I'm going to go ahead and click on OK so DHCP is enabled for our subnet that's going to be our data network so what this means is when we go to create an ESXi host we're going to have to make sure that we associate VMNet2 will be for DHC will be our data network and that any VMs that we create on that, on that ESXi host will have to make sure that that particular NIC, that, that VM NIC that's associated to whatever port group it might be, that we make sure that it's data. And we'll talk about this stuff more when we get into how the ESXi host will associate to it. But this will allow the VMs themselves to get an IP address and all that good stuff that goes along with it. I'm going to go ahead and click on Apply. That's going to go ahead and deploy all these VM nets and we'll be in good shape here in just a moment once it's done doing the deployment. As you can see not a whole lot here that we need to worry about. I will be going out and deploying a another VM that will be basically used for communication with inside of this network. It will be a virtual machine that I deploy. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And that ladies and gentlemen is it for the work we have to do in the storage or the networking portion of this and because we have the five VM nets that's going to allow us to go through and deploy pretty much anything we need to as we're moving forward. So if you have any questions for me let me know in the comment section below but beyond that thanks for stopping by please like share and subscribe and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.